What's up guys? Welcome to my video on how to improve in Space Engineers. Now the way improvement happens in this game is either by becoming more familiar with the blocks and their functions, or by increasing your knowledge base on how the game works, how to solve problems, and how to get the blocks to basically just do what you want them to do. Now I'm going to be working on more of the latter part of this by sharing with you tips and techniques that I have picked up over a few years of playing. And this is going to be working from more basic to more advanced. So if you feel like you know everything that I'm talking about at the beginning, then stick around for a while and maybe you'll pick something up. So jumping right into the world, uh, the first thing that I want to touch on is the spectator camera. So this can be enabled in the world settings and then you just press F8. This gives you a free camera that you can use to fly around the world. Um, you can also use it to go inside of things you build. Check out if you've got any space left over to put more blocks. You can see if something's wrong, if something's broken. Uh, but what's really useful about it is if you take your engineer and you put them in front of a control panel like this where it's got the yellow highlight or blue hi highlight then now I can work on whatever I'm building but I still have the ability to press K and open up my control panel at any time if I want to adjust a rotor or adjust a light setting without having my spectator camera needing to be right in front of that control panel. So really handy will make you a faster builder if you use that tip. Another kind of fun thing with spectator is if you want to move your engineer around quickly then you can hold control shift and that will teleport them to wherever your spectator camera was. So if I just quickly wanted to go check out what's on top of this hill here I could just fly up there control shift and poof uh, this guy's way up here and we can go back just as quick. So that's spectator camera, I highly recommend that you get familiar with it uh, and start using it. The next thing I want to touch on quick is lighting. So I've seen more than a handful of times uh, someone will make a base or a ship and the inside looks something like this. Um, you definitely don't need more lights to light up a room. So with something like this, then I would just take all the interior lights. I'm going to just turn them off and then actually using this feature, show block and terminal, I can turn that off so that they don't show up in my control panel anymore. And now I'm just going to go in here and add, instead of using, you know, 70 lights like we had, maybe I'll just add 10. And let's see if we can light up this place even better than when we walked in. So now when I type in interior light, only the ones that I just placed are showing up. We'll increase the radius, make it big, and the intensity comes down. You can adjust the fall off so that it's a little easier on the eyes as well as the offset. And then just doing a little kind of waterfall effect like this with the colors can give you a nice uh, homely orange hue to it or you can change it to more of a blue if you wanted to go for more of a uh, sci-fi look but using way fewer lights than we walked in we have uh, an even better effect and a way to light up the room so that is lights the next thing I want to talk about is paint I'm just gonna grab something with an interesting color and what I used to do for paint is keep track of all of the color codes that I wanted to use using the P menu. So these three numbers up here, I would have stored on some kind of a text file or so until I realized that you can hold Shift P to copy any color that your cursor is looking at. And then you can use that color uh, to paint with. You should know that you can hold shift to color a bigger area and then something i found some people don't know also is if you hold control shift 
you can paint the entire grid that same color that you're working with. This does not transfer across subgrids, which could be helpful, but now you know. And we'll go ahead and change this back to gray so we don't have to look at a giant piece of macaroni this whole time. The next thing I'm going to touch on is rotors, uh, specifically how to attach two rotors together the easy way. Um, I've already made a video on this, but it's easy enough to just throw it into this one as well to make sure that everybody sees it. Um, so with small rotors, the first thing you want to do, change the displacement to 0.008. Um, this is just the magic number that aligns them perfectly as if they were just free blocks in a line. So next we'll just drag a line of blocks across here. Or actually, we're going to delete this rotor head, put a block here, grab a rotor, and now place a rotor head. Then if we go in here to rotor 2, we can attach that one. And then we'll turn on these rotors, uh, give it some torque, braking torque. We'll give them a velocity of, say, 5. And we know that this rotor has to be going the other way, so we'll reverse it. And then we'll turn them both back on. And now we have double the torque on our beam here. Uh, very handy, very easy, quick to set up. It works for large grid as well. So I'll just place down two rotors here. The only difference being for large grid is their displacement should go all the way down to negative 40. But once again, we can delete the head, move these blocks over, new head and attach. And then just to show that this uh, isn't going to be unstable if you take it out of the ground, um, I'll set this velocity to 20, reverse the other one and turn it on. And then we can copy and paste this out of the ground so it's free. And you see it behaves perfectly normal, perfectly stable, just giving you that extra torque that you might need. Our next tip is going to be doing the same thing but using pistons. So say you've made a lift and you don't like the way it looks with just one piston pushing it up and down. It doesn't exactly look secure um, or very aesthetic that way. So you want to use two pistons to push it up. But if you try and connect them up like this, uh, it's not actually attached on this point. So the way that we work around this is we put a, one normal block on top of each piston and then we're going to go grab a merge block. We'll put one of those on top of each and then really easy without even needing to copy and paste anything I'll just drag along a line of blocks up here. Put another merge block so that it's straight up and down over this one and then bridge this gap here so it looks like three blocks in length. Put another merge block, check and make sure that it will fall correctly, and then I'm just going to delete these ones. Let it fall down. They both merge together. Now this is one grid, so I can connect these, and I can just delete this top part. Then rebuild my lift right here. And we can see if we test these two pistons that will go up and down just as stable as that one but it looks a lot better you could do this with four or six or however many you wanted to stick on there and just a much better effect so that is pistons over here um, this demo has to do with making a sensor trigger the same action twice so we've rigged up a little door we've got the hinge that just reverses and let's just say that I wanted my sensor to open and close that door instead of having to press this button 
So what I would want to do is grab my sensor, set up actions, grab the hinge, and press reverse. So now when it sees me, it'll close the door or open the door. But if I wanted to do that when it doesn't see me, then it just flip-flops here. And it makes it look like I can't actually accomplish this. Um, super easy fix for this one. We're just going to take our hinge, make a group, and I'll just call it hinge. And now that becomes a separate entity. So now when I set up actions, instead of using the hinge block, I'll just go to groups, grab that hinge, tell it to reverse, and now it works. So when my sensor doesn't see me, closes the door. When I walk back up, it does see me. It opens the door back up. Problem solved. Next tip is going to be dealing with these angled staircases. So let's just say you built something nice on the ground and you want to put a staircase off the side of it. But after you put your first one here, then you start doing one of these numbers where you're trying to make this staircase fit next to it, but it just won't work. You can put it in the ground, but you know that's that's not exactly a long-term solution. So the best way I found to get around this issue is to grab an LCD, and you can put it on the bottom right here to make it even less noticeable. We can grab a little grinder, turn it into a scaffolding. And then when we want to grab our staircase, it will actually attach to that small scaffolding part. And pretty hard to tell it's there. Looks really clean. And that will stay with your build whenever you want to copy paste it somewhere else. Uh, this has other applications as well. If you have blocks that just look like they can't connect into a space, try using one of these and hopefully that'll solve your issue. Our next thing right here, uh, we're going to be talking about how to fill in gaps between your joints. So if you're using a hinge or a rotor or something, and you want the connection point to be as filled in as possible without banging against both of the grids here. Something that is super handy and I don't see done a lot is using a wheel suspension. And so I'm just going to delete this block here, add my wheel suspension, um, and you can see that it actually clips inside of this block here. And that's because the only collision part for this is on this first block, and the second one actually can go inside all other blocks. So that just gives it a nicer look, uh, makes it look more secure, even if it's not actually connected. And if we move this head up and down, uh, still looks fine. Doesn't provide any kind of uh, clanging or collisions there. So good use there. Here's another way I used it, just on the back of these knee joints for this mech that just didn't work out for me, but this is still a, a nice kind of aesthetic way to fill in gaps that otherwise would be wide open and not look so good without them. While we're over here, you can see I've put this projector on a hinge, um, and I'm using it as a canopy. And I think projectors are probably one of the most underutilized effects blocks in the game. I will probably end up doing an entire video just devoted to showing the many uses that you can have for them. But lots of potential right there, and you can get super creative uh, for using them. The last tip for this video is going to be using conveyor tubes and Gatling guns on small grids in order to disconnect uh, two parts of the grid from each other while still being originally a single compact grid. So a single shot from a Gatling gun will break a conveyor tube and if you have a blast door on one side there will be no uh, deformation damage to your build. So a bomber is a really easy 
application of this. I'm just going to do a quick little demo. We'll get some forward speed, and then as I turn around my Gatling guns and shoot with the barrier, the warheads fall off, and we have a sweet little bombing system. Uh, I also expanded on this concept. Here's once again showing a projector being used as basically a glass cockpit. But expanding on this concept with the conveyor tubes, um, this bomber has a welder inside of it which will continuously project more bombs and then just have alternate gatling guns here shooting them off. And in creative it'll just keep going forever. But fun concept and a, a good way to use this. This duo of gatling guns and conveyor tubes. Also doubles as an interesting hole digger. Nice and uniform. Uh, one more way to use this. Uh, you can see this build for... Uh, you've got the mech and the platform, but I wanted them together in order to make the blueprint. But initially, I want anybody who downloads this to press this detach button to detach the feet. So I put this sign here. And but I don't want this sign to stay here forever because obviously I made it so that it's ugly and you want to get rid of it. So you just press this button. This arm will swing down. The Gatling will shoot the conveyor tube and then the whole sign will fly off like a firework. Kind of as a self-cleaning <laughs> mechanism. And now you're just left with a clean, perfect thing for someone to enjoy. So that's all I've got for this video. Um, I'm looking forward to making some more, but I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.